Hey everybody, welcome back. We're continuing our reading of the Hadith, um, the collection compilation by Riyayu Salihin. Let's continue. It has not been disappointing and we're all only 24 pages in and I already get a craving to want to keep reading it uh, with you, which is really interesting because as a book person, you get kind of clingy to books. Um, let's begin. We were dealing with intention and such now we're dealing with uh remember the three men were inside of like this cave and a boulder went in front and they all three of them had to plead so it could get moved aside they were granted that now he's going to give us the commentary to help us understand the hadith more number one it is permissible to pray through our virtuous deeds but to make someone a medium for it is an innovation in deen which should be avoided for two major reasons okay boom let's put a little star next to that because notice this this is that's a you can pray through your deeds but not through a person right it's not virgin mary or virgin de guadalupe you pray for me and then talk to god for me no it's not you know it that's a distinction of pre please pray for me instead of i know you have the ear of god and you have more leverage than me, therefore you need to pray. It's quite different, right? So we have to realize that. Firstly, there is no evidence in Sharia to support this. Secondly, it is against the practice of Karul Kurun, the best of generations. This term is used for the first three generations of Muslims. Oh, look at that. Okay, let's highlight that then. And that's spelled K H. A I R and then space U L space Q U R U N. Okay, so that's the best. This term is used for the first three generations. The one in which the Prophet, peace be upon him, lived, and the two following. Cool, see? So it's important to read a lot because you're learning so many things. Two, preference should be given to the service of parents, even over the service of one's own wife and children. Now that is interesting because I would have thought it would have been the other way. Is that for men? Yeah, because said wife, duh. Okay. What about for a woman though? Because, see, because that was my criticism towards my uncle when he used the Old Testament to justify him. Well, that's different than because he wasn't living up to his duty of being a son to his Okay, never mind. Okay, I just self-corrected myself. So, that's... Okay. You're... Because he... Because he was of the Christian tradition, he chose his wife. He chose his wife in his, in his new marriage over, like, taking care of my grandma. But if from an Islamic perspective, you have to... It's different than what he did because it says your parents... You will honor your mother and father essentially over your own wife and children. So a wife should never try to separate her husband from his parents. That is a distinction right there. So this is quite different. I I wonder... I, I don't remember which Old Testament that was. Leave his mother and go with his wife something something. I don't remember where that is in the Bible. I'll probably come across it when we finish that. But you can contrast that to this. Very interesting, right? Three. To abstain from sins out of fear of Allah is a highly meritorious act. Yes. Four. Laborers should always be treated fairly. If someone has paid to a laborer less than his due, it should be paid to him in a decent manner. Five. Any supplication which is made sincerely and with real sense of humbleness is granted by Allah. So he emphasis on real sense of humbleness. To ask from a humble heart. 6. Allah sometimes helps his pious men even in an unusual manner, which is termed as karama, wonder or marvel. That's spelled K-A-R-A-M-A-T. Interesting. Thus, like the miracles of the prophets, wonders of the righteous people are also true. 
but miracles and wonders both appear with the will of Allah. Okay, now we're in a new chapter. We're in chapter 2 now. Repentance. Scholars said, It is necessary to repent from every sin. If this sense involves the right of Allah, not a human, then there are three conditions to be met in order that repentance be accepted by Allah. Okay, so. The... Yeah, you have to repent. You have to do that. Because how are you going to change your behavior, right? Okay, one. To desist from committing it. Two. To feel sorry for committing it. Three. To decide not to recommit it. Any repentance failing to meet any of these three conditions would not be sound. But if the sin involves a human's right, it requires a fourth condition. I.e. to absolve oneself from such right. Ooh. If it is a property, he should return it to its rightful owner. Oh. Okay, so let's say someone jacks a car. They're sorry they jacked the car, but they're still driving in it. You're not really sorry. He could turn it in somehow. He's going to have to accept what he did, right? And he had to change it. If it is slandering or backbiting, one should ask the pardon of the offended. I've done that before. Yeah, I've done that before. I apologize to one girl. In particular, I remember. Yeah, you gotta do it sometimes. You gotta realize when you're wrong and apologize. Other times you have to be like, we'll just go our different ways. But sometimes you gotta realize when you went over the bounds. One should also repent from all sins. If he repents from some, his repentance would still be sound, according to the people of sound knowledge. He should, however, repent from the rest. Scriptural proofs from the book and the sunnah and the consensus of the scholars support the incumbency of repentance. Okay. Allah the Exalted says, and all of you beg Allah to forgive you, O believers, that you may be successful. 2431. I remember you pray even for the sins you didn't know you committed. Right? That's what I say. Oh, please forgive me for the sins that I don't even know that I committed. Right? Seek the forgiveness of your Rub and turn to him in repentance. 11.3. All of you who believe... Turn to Allah with sincere repentance. 66 8. 13. Abu Harara, may Allah be pleased with him, reported I heard Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, saying, By Allah, I seek Allah's forgiveness and repent to him more than 70 times a day. Al Bukhari. I remember that in the Aisha book. We were learning about how many times he'd pray, right? Commentary. 1. It is an inducement for seeking pardon and forgiveness, the Prophet, peace be upon him, whose past and future sins were forgiven. Ask Allah's forgiveness. Then how about us who commit sins on a regular basis, not to seek pardon and forgiveness from Allah? Sometimes when I when I get like I felt bad like I was so being I was a little impatient when I was doing a transaction and I felt kind of bad like immediately after and I asked for forgiveness because I was like, I didn't have to be that mm, curt, right? It was a little bit pushy, not rude to where it's like a bad, like, you know, but I should have just let it happen. And I was a little bit impatient, even though I was first in line. I don't know. So it's like, you got to worry about that. You got to ask for forgiveness when you had these little moments where... You kind of, even if it's something little, just got to be like conscious of what you're doing. Two, sincere and ceaseless prayer for pardon is essential so that sins committed by us unintentionally are also forgiven. The above hadith lays great emphasis on seeking pardon. Yeah, unintentionally, committed by us unintentionally, right? Fourteen, Al Agar bin Yasar al Muzani, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Turn you people in repentance to Allah and beg pardon of him. I turn to him in repentance a hundred times a day, Muslim. So, a hundred times a day. So, well, that's 
a lot. But then again, how many things we can do in our own day, you don't even know, right? But we shouldn't go ever one day without saying at least one time for forgiveness, essentially, is what the point of this is. You gotta make time. 